Solid. Will you go ahead and call the order? Ms. Groom, will you please call roll? Ms. Stone? Here. Dina Wendt? Here. Ms. Stone? Here. Ms. Groom? Here. Mr. Wendt? Here. Mr. Phillips? Chairman Lee? Uh, here. Thank you. So, uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Any comment about the minutes? All right. All in favor of approving the minutes from aye. November 10th meeting, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, respond by saying nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the architectural embellishments at the Pizza King restaurant. We have here. And I think um, Dino P. Paspalakis just filed this form 8B uh, before the item. He's the applicant on this item, so he's going to be going down to the audience, and so he okay. will not be voting. All righty. Will you be presenting this, Dino, or? Staff. Yeah, uh, if I could, please, I'll, I'll start and then uh, and then allow the applicant then to uh, uh, make his comments. Certainly, please. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The um, the case is fairly simple. This is the uh, building that's down uh, at the boardwalk, uh, directly uh, just to the north of the pier and the Main Street Arch. And it's been a Pizza King for a while, and it's uh, the uh, the desire is to upgrade some of the uh, the signage that is there, and the and the uh, and and one piece in particular was to to do some architectural embellishments. And as you know, when you go down there to the boardwalk and and the amusement arcades, uh, you look at Mardi Gras, you look at some of the other uh, buildings that are there. They have some very unique. Uh, uh, facades with those architectural embellishments, so it's it's part of the theme of entertainment and 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 the whole arcade field, and uh, so it's really something that's encouraged. It's encouraged by the E Zone Master Plan. Uh, so uh, Mr. Paspalakis has uh, has uh, asked that this uh, be considered for approval with a uh, with. One sign in particular, and I'll just go ahead and bring up this up on the uh, the picture. I think you all know where it is, but the existing building looks like this. Uh, with you can see there, there the the sign is not very clear. It's got a lot of information on it. It's it's um, above the uh, the actual uh, flat awning, and so this is what's proposed to be at the top. And this would actually, this architectural embellishment, like some other architectural embellishments, would be exceeding the height of the uh, the building itself, and that gives you an example. And you can see the the wording "Pizza King" is on there. And I want to uh, tell you one thing: that when you look at the regulations, you can't have a logo. And as a part of an architectural embellishment, this is not the logo. Uh, there is a logo with a pizza guy on it, but it's not this guy. So, so it's a little different. Gotcha. It's just a technicality. And then the Pizza King sign itself is a, is a wall sign we can approve administratively. Uh, and so uh, your your only uh, issue here to look at and, and requesting approval of is this three-dimensional picture there's a there's another wall sign there on the other side that would match up as well so there'd be some consistency on both facades and uh, thought I yeah let's see yeah th let's just look at you can see the 3d image as it projects out um, just give you some idea of of, of that three-dimensional image and uh, so recommendation is to approve it meets um, all of the requirements of the uh, uh, for a architectural embellish embellishment. So uh, staff is recommending that you approve. Okay, thank you. 
Mr. Mokov. Yeah, did you have anything you wanted to add, or do you want to just oh, answer questions? This is what the logo currently looks like. I didn't have a picture of it, but I took a picture of it. It's just it's, it's basically the Lord piece of cake with a crown above it. So, um, and then what I did with that I main, uh, what, what you had before you is the actual, um, um, I just want you to know. Uh, it has Dina Passable, I guess 565 Riverside Drive. Um, it has the uh, uh, the two signs that I'm going to be putting off with the architectural embellishment, and then it continues on to show you other architectural embellishments within the city, including Big Shark, uh, the Mardi Gras, uh, Big Kahuna's, and um, and the one that I didn't take a picture of is the one that we passed in 2012, which was the one at the ocean deck that they have a really nice one that they just put up. Um, I brought with me Al Townsend, who's going to be putting the sign up. Um, if you have any questions uh, for him as to the materials that are going to be used or what have you. Now, one thing I did on that one picture that you saw, there were a bunch of uh, support beams coming down for that uh, canopy. Um, I, I will be hiring an, uh, um, an engineer to structurally uh, support the uh, canopy so that way it does not have all those support beams. So that way what you see will probably have one support beam on one end and one support beam on the other, maybe a couple underneath the sign, but it's not going to be 12 of them going all the way across, you know. So that way this sign will actually look nice, you know, once we're done. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Dino or no? All right. Is there a motion to approve the architectural embellishments at the Pizza King restaurant? Oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. John Eccleson, 413 North Grandview Avenue. Um, this brings up a point that I've been hitting on. It has been almost what? 30 years since we put in a um, quote-unquote CRA uh, lighting, the whole colors, the whole nine yards. I think it's time to look at it. Um, this diagram, or whatever you wish to call it, a uh, logo, uh, is a bit cheesy. It's a bit um, something you would find at a strip mall, something that we've ne never wanted before. But we're moving into a different era. I don't think what we, the Art Deco look that we were planning on fits any longer. I think it's time to go looking back at that. Uh, we have several murals that we at one time would not allow. And if you look at the murals on Humphreys Building, on the um, corner of uh, Main Street and Ocean Avenue, they've been there for years. They're attractive. This is something that's now part uh, and parcel of the area. So I'm asking, I'm obviously you're going to pass it. But for anybody else that comes before you, I'm asking you to change your rules and regulations so that they don't have to come before you. That, and I hate giving it to staff, but this is something I think that staff can do. But um, I would ask you to look at all of your uh, rules and regulations on your colors, on your lighting, all the things that we did 30 years ago. Let's take a look at them individually and see if we want to keep them or change them. LED is one of the prime examples that we would like, I would think we would need to change. So I'm asking you to pass this, but also, at some point, look at all of our rules and regulations to upgrade them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, it doesn't matter if it's Dino or uh, Alan, it doesn't matter. What's the distance from the awning above? In the first picture, you've got to hold on. Hang on one second. Please. I'm Al Townsend, Townsend Sign Company. Uh, the height of the actual wall graphic is six and a half feet. It's approximately 30 inches above the roof line. Above the roof line. Right. What material? All I'm thinking about is if there's a strong winds or. Now this is this is the same thing we did at the ocean deck, which is 20 by 30 feet actually. Um, it's a high density foam with a polyurethane finish, hard coat polyurethane finish. This one will be mounted on a three-quarter inch PVC board backing, which is then bolted, leg bolted to the building wall. So it's about 36 inches above the... Above about the, 30 inches. 30 inches above the... And it will be engineered to meet 140 mile wind load standards. So, yep. Thanks, All right. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the architectural embellishments at the Pizza King restaurant, which is agenda item number four? 
Make a motion to approve. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. So, um, is there any debate or any further comments that need to be made about it? All right. All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please respond by saying nay. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the motion. <laughs> the motion is adopted. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number five, which is redevelopment project updates. Reed. Thank you. Uh, just want to uh, bring you up to date on a couple things. The Veterans Memorial Bridge, uh, also known as the Orange Avenue Bridge, uh, affects places like the Hard Rock and, and as, as you're entering that side of the beachside redevelopment areas. And it's a very important project um, in terms of how it's going to just change the whole aesthetic, the entry to the beachside. It's going to be a, a beautiful bridge. And uh, it's, it's our hope that uh, um, everything that, that has to happen with that bridge is going to happen in a very timely way. There have been some delays uh, with, with some of the, the schedule, but uh, uh, we're looking forward to it. Moving ahead, to get all the details, you've got to go to the meeting because it's not going to happen ahead of time. There is a uh, website that, uh, that is uh, pretty good and informational that you want to look at if you haven't already. Uh, and you can just, uh, if you Google Veterans Memorial Bridge, it goes right to the one in, in uh, Daytona Beach. So uh, that's, that's the first piece of information. The Safe Harbor um, proposal with uh, the homeless issue is now in uh, come before the city commission and that new contract was approved uh, this last week and that's a very important and historic step in uh, I think the, the city's progress to try to uh, get a lot of the answers that are being asked out there in the community um, about the cost the facility and other uh, numerical quantitative uh, information and, and not just the the qualitative issues of taking care of people who right now don't get a lot of care. And uh, the, the next issue uh, on, on the list is the Banshell restoration. Uh, that um, is an issue for us to try to coordinate a lot of different things that are happening. The roof is underway now in terms of, of working through the replacement. Uh, with the uh, ECHO grant, there is also after that going to be the Ritchie Plaza, which you're going to be hearing a lot more about uh, soon. And, uh, and there is a, uh, an ECHO grant that was provided for that. So we're very excited. The fundraising is going very well. Uh, so this is uh, one of the, uh, the projects that uh, we'll, we'll let somebody else talk about later. I'll put that aside and talk about the big one we're working on now for the, the historic preservation restoration. And the ranking right now at the state is very positive. So uh, assuming that the legislature does not pull the plug on, on the, uh, the funding, we should uh, uh, be uh, seeing good news uh, so that we would have money this summer to start the the, uh, the major historic preservation work on the band shell. And of course, well, when I say that, I don't want to scare anybody that's going to be trying to operate uh, concerts or anything else in there. We'll, we'll try to work a schedule in so that we have uh, little or no impact on, on the, uh, the major events that go on in our community. Uh, last, the last thing I wanted to touch upon is the ISB corridor. Uh, we've uh, gone back and looked at that. We know we have about 18 percent of the, the buildings are uh, vacant. And so that's an issue for us. But it is 18 percent. Another way of looking at that is it's about 72 percent occupied. Now, having said that, what we occupy buildings with is not always going to be productive or what we want to see on, on the corridor. 
Um, so, but it's controlled by the private sector, not not the city. We do have some vacant land there uh, that that is a uh, commercial property, and we intend to uh, to go out and uh, and uh, try to find investors for that. It's the, everything is heating up quite nicely in terms of interest along the corridor uh, and uh, in Daytona Beach in general. So. Uh, now is a is a good time for us to start taking those actions, and um, right we don't need a plan right now. We just need action. And I just want to reinforce that for everybody here. Okay, that and uh, and so we're going to move ahead now with with uh, that effort. I think the um, there's some work being done on the the actual infrastructure part of this, the traffic circles, and looking at how that's all going to come together. Uh, but there's a, a little piece of information that some of you might be interested in, that the Shell Station um, is getting a lot of looks. Uh, there's a, they've finally put it on the market. And uh, so my guess is you're going to get a gas station again, and it's better than being vacant, but uh, that's what it looks like at this point. Okay, uh, so we'll see how that uh, goes. And I'm, I'm hearing other news uh, that's all good in terms of, of uh, other investors coming into, into the area. Uh, if you looked at the streamline, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, under construction. So, you know, we'll just uh, bear with that and uh, like a lot of other things. And the best thing to see right now is some dust and and uh, and some work going on and fences, construction fences, and hopefully some cranes are coming as well. Uh, I can't give you much more progress report on our, on our hotels right now, but there's nothing bad to report. There's only good things uh, out there in terms of 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 uh, making some progress with permits uh, that has to happen before people can can start the the real building process. Uh, that's what I have. I'll be glad to answer any questions that the board has. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for Reed? On, on the Nash show, um, is there, other than the roof, and um, is there going to be any improvements made to the system, sound system or to um, other, like, Related to the concerts and what have you, or is it going to be for the aesthetics and, and the roof and the leaks and whatnot? There's to date, there's there's no plan for funding. We've talked about it, but there's no plan that I'm aware of for looking at the replacement of the uh, the sound system. Okay. And as you and I know, it could use some work. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes I. Uh, I actually heard a complaint from, uh, who was it, um, um, well, one of the city officials' wives uh, complained about the, the sound, and I, I was laughing. I thought, you're complaining to me, your husband's <laughs> assistant city manager, but anyways, you know. I, 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 by the way, I have a tentative lineup for uh, the summer schedule. It, um, yeah. it would be started off at the Bruce Springsteen tribute, then it goes into James Taylor, Crosby, Steele, and Nash, and Foreigner by Company, then Hart, U2, Billy Joe, The Eagles, Leonard Skinner, Styx, Journey, Santana Doody Brothers, uh, Rolling Stones, Bon Jovi, Fleetwood Mac, uh, and uh, the Michael Allman Band, who's Greg Allman's son, and then it's going to end with Elton John. Awesome. Thank you. Jalberry, you had a question for you? Um, <laughs> not, the, yeah, exactly, not the actual bench. Uh, Reed, anything, anything new on that piece of property next to 7-Eleven? They just dropped a container over there and left it there. Okay. Uh, we're talking about the Screamers? Project? Yes. Yes. The bungees and all that? Yes. The, yeah. the three the three rides <clears throat> that were proposed there yeah um, the there was uh, uh, a request to uh, you know to what was the the term can you explain this by <laughs> in legal um, terms what what's happening 
Well, the request before after it moved from this board changed to two rides. Uh, it got city commission approval, and then there was a challenge by an adjacent property owner. So it went to court, and um, the circuit court upheld the city commission's decision. And so now we're in that 30 day, 30 day period where they have an opportunity to appeal to the district court. So we're kind of waiting to see what happens there. But I imagine they're not going to start development until that decision is final. So basically some litigation. Yeah, and uh, we're reaching the tail end of the 30 day period. So it could be final pretty quickly here. Okay. Do you have any idea when? It, well, I know nobody knows, but what, they haven't even applied for permits or anything like that. I believe there was. I think they were waiting on the circuit court decision, and that <clears throat> happened on December 24th. So, um, you know, approximately January 24th. So, in another week, we'd know whether or not they filed another appeal. And that's the last appeal. And that would be the last one. But I know they've been in our uh, in our building permit office and been asking questions, and they may have picked up applications, whatever they need okay. to get ready. The the other the other question is on the streamline. Um, I know they're doing a lot of work, and I talked to Philip and everything else. But um, do do they have an a, an opening date? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Is not an opening date. There's. So maybe you know something I didn't know when I talked to him. Something. No, <laughs> okay. it's. I, I think when you get an old building like that, it, it like any old building, it's a. It's just a, a project that goes on and on and on. Yeah. But I, I think the good news is is that we have a property owner who wants to get it right. Yes, and, and so that's they went, good. Yeah, they went deep. I don't think you, find, you know, they went really deep on the walls and everything. They scraped mm -hmm. everything off. Right. Other questions for Reed? Hold on. I have to clarify something I just said. Uh, the circuit court issued their oral order on December 24th. The written order didn't come for maybe another week or so, so it would be 30 days from the date of the written order, which I don't know offhand. So it'll be so. at the end of January, the first week of February. Seems like it would be. All right. Anything else for Reed? All right. Are there any public comments? Uh, Ruth Traeger, 610 Bostwick Avenue. Uh, you mentioned the Banshell and Ritchie Plaza. Uh, what are the plans for the clock tower? The clock tower is getting uh, uh, funded, and I think we're we're putting together uh, the the work right now for the the preservation part of it. There, the architects have to prepare the spec plans for the actual work. But it's moving on, and and can can tell you that we're committed to following through, and and utilizing that grant, and 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 get the uh, the work done. You. You're welcome. All right. John Eccleston, four thirteen North Grandview Avenue. Uh, several things, so I'll just go through them quickly. Um, one. There's a vacant lot on Ocean Avenue behind 7-Eleven that the city wanted to acquire. Um, what's the status on that? It's been four years, so something should have gone somewhere. Uh, two, the Bancho was mentioned that they're uh, seeking a grant to um, upgrade or historically uh, redo the Bancho. Uh, I've gone through three roofs and four grants on the interior. So the interior's done, the window's done. Uh, the electrical update has been done. It looks like garbage on the outside but it, they did upgrade the uh, wattage um, so I'm wondering what else can be done with the historical grant um, the financials I don't know if you all have gotten them uh, from October 30th you should have gotten financials where the money's coming to and from uh, the ones I got said you have 66,000 to work with there's a half million dollars that kind of went somewhere um, who is going to determine what the ISB corridor looks like I know uh, we were shown some uh, 15 years ago what it was going to look like. Um, they're talking about it again. Um, Midtown has done uh, extensive looking at theirs from their CRA. Uh, Midtown has determined what downtown is going to look like. I'm wondering if Midtown is going to determine what Beachside is going to look like or whether you all will have a say in it. 
Uh, also on Ritchie Plaza, will you also have a say on what Ritchie Plaza looks like? I think it's something that the community should uh, determine what, what goes on in there, what changes, what doesn't change, et cetera. Uh, third, I was talking to uh, Karen from Boot Hill. Um, all the decorations stop at Hollywood. Uh, years ago, I guess, what, 25, we redid Main Street, and because of zoning, it stopped at Hollywood. The street does not continue, the uh, sidewalk does not continue, the plants, nothing continues past Hollywood. Um, she was wondering if there's a possibility that we could extend the landscaping that we did from the ocean to Hollywood, that half a block to either Peninsula or to the river, so that she can get Christmas decorations, she can get all the stuff that the rest of Main Street gets. I, I do believe after 25 years, it's about time to finish that section. And um, lastly, a pet peeve of mine, when we have Bike Week and Biketoberfest, we get hundreds of thousands of people walking up and down Main Street, and we stick all of these cones at all of the intersections so that people realize they have to walk up, step down, walk up, step down. Um, the city went uh, a year ago, maybe, and added um, Handicap to Peninsula, three sides, but not the fourth one. So that was strange to start with. But all of our handicap and all of our um, ramps go into the street. So if somebody were in a um, wheelchair, if they come to an intersection, they must enter into the street, go down the street itself rather than the side street. So they have to go down Main Street, and then come back onto the sidewalk. So I'm wondering whether there's a possibility of just literally going one end to the other with the ramps going where the sidewalks are so people don't have to up and down the steps because that's where you trip, all right? Uh, baby carriages, for some reason we see a lot, of, uh, well not a lot, maybe 20 or 30 during Bike Week and Biketoberfest and the parents have to stop and the crowd gets around them. It is just something that should have been done 20 years ago. So I'm asking you to consider, uh, one, looking at, because it's been 25 years, the Main Street, the bricks no longer match in a lot of locations. So if we were to do this and put the cement ramps, those bricks that were taken up could then repair all of the bricks that are mix and match. All right? That's, uh, I think, something that we should do because we're still going to have Bike Week and Bike Biketoberfest. And this way, we don't have to put out 600 cones, which is time consuming. And we get nobody tripping. We don't get the crowds that are bunched up at the streets because of, of, of things that are happening. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Reed, is there any of that that you wanted to, you could address? <clears throat> sure. I, just on 7-Eleven lot, the, you said there was a lot behind there mm -hmm. towards the ocean? Yeah, the city bought two lots. Right. And there's a great okay. park and there's mm -hmm. a lot in the middle. Yeah. Right. So we're going to buy it and then happen. As far as I know, there's still an effort ongoing to try to address the acquisition. Okay. Uh, with respect to... Uh, <clears throat> the ISB corridor, I can tell you that uh, that that project has been before us, uh, I think, when we first started talking about it six, seven years ago at this board. Oh, anyone was here then, but that's what we were talking about and trying to plan. So it is a long time. And I think we had Mr. McLemore uh, tell us that to uh, from Public Works that it might be uh, um, many, many more years to come. It's really going to depend on some grants. And the good news is we're doing very well in the, in the grant department. And we have a, a new person on board uh, under contract for getting grants. She has a, a significant uh, experience with Department of Transportation funding. And uh, so we're we're uh, we're hopeful that uh, we'll be successful in in uh, in getting some uh, some assistance there to uh, um, get some of this work done, and there will be an opportunity for you to see what's being planned. But right now, it's on hold; it's not moving forward in the in any concrete sense that that uh, we can see anything. So. When you say see, will they have any input? No, you get an opportunity at a concept when when we do get to the plans that are called 30% plans to uh, to get an opportunity to see what what's going on and comment on that. Okay. The 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 next thing to 
to cover, I, I think, is the uh, the ADA ramps. Just note on Main Street, we are out there. We're making um, a lot of uh, Im improvements to the concrete down in that area along Pinewood Cemetery. And we're, uh, we're also addressing a number of problems we see really both in the street um, area where there's some cracked concrete tripping hazards. All of that's getting addressed right now. That fourth uh, uh, ramp at Peninsula, again, that's being addressed. So that's, gonna, that's going to get fixed. So we've, we've, uh, we've got that uh, underway. We have a new person on board that uh, is working over at Public Works and overseeing a lot of this, uh, created a, uh, or renamed a position as asset uh, manager and uh, and he's off and running and, uh, and and doing a great job since he got here in October. Uh, uh, Steve Richter and and uh, Steve comes out of uh, uh, the Winter Springs area and uh, formerly worked with Ron McLemore. So he's one of Mr. McLemore's right-hand people now and uh, and is uh, proving worthy in tackling a lot of jobs all over the city. So uh, we're, we're uh, glad to have him on board. He's a person of action. Okay. Um, the the only other thing I'd say is uh, I have nothing in a contract right now for extending the, the Christmas decorations uh, or doing anything with the flower pots, and that will not happen this year. We're just getting the, the concrete work and all of that base work on the sidewalks first. Uh, then we'll come back and address the budget in terms of trying to finish up, because I agree. it, it it uh, it can use some work, and there's some redevelopment that has to happen on those blocks, as well, because because as you know, some of the buildings have been torn down as you get towards Halifax, um, and there will be a, a lot of work in that area. And I hope that we'll we'll start to see some something uh, happen in terms of uh, redevelopment interests. Uh, and just the other day, I think uh, someone's coming in to look at the uh, 115 Main Street again. So you might see that next month, okay? All right. That's Thank it. you. You're welcome. Where is that? Is that on the water? That's the one on the water, yes. I have a question for Carrie. Um, when we were talking about the Screamers Park uh, decision uh, with the judge, there, um, and I kind of thought of it when John was talking, uh, the city normally has this uh, policy where you're limited to two minutes. And um, not to not that you exceeded her, but I'm going to use it as an example, and, uh, which she obviously did. But, um, uh, but what are the, in the judge's ruling, the reason why they uh, rule for uh, the city is that the city allowed the attorney to exceed the two minutes and, and have adequate time to uh, to present his case. Is that did I read that correctly? Uh, it's it's a. Uh, does that mean that in the future Dustin needs to take into consideration if an attorney is up here talking at the podium? Should we give him a little bit extra time? Um, kind of a two-part question. Right. Going back to the the first part the judge's ruling it was kind of a one they did give extra time but two they didn't the the person challenging didn't assert standing and so normally what happens in city commission meetings when someone says hey i'm asserting i'm an affected property owner they usually have the opportunity to um have as much time as the applicant to cross-examine i don't know if you remember the shamrock case but they held a special meeting and so they didn't assert affected property interest rights so the city wasn't on notice that they wanted this opportunity to do more um, and at the hearing he agreed to these time restrictions uh, mr. Ford so um, now my experience in the redevelopment board meetings is we haven't 
restricted people in their time presentations. Uh, when when they were here before this board, there were no restrictions on time. So again, that's chair's decision. But if somebody came here and did say, oh, I'm an affected property owner, then yes, you would want to give them extra time. But as a practical matter, we haven't had that um, become an issue before these boards. They've been unlimited in their presentations. Okay. All right. So uh, moving on to agenda item number seven, which are board comments. We'll start with Gilbert. Um, I, I, my main concern was this, the screen is like. Um, then the other one I want to ask you to read is uh, right behind 7-Eleven, the property that John was talking about. If I recall, and I think when the city acquired that piece of property, they had a certain time to fix it up, to put landscaping and to put like every other applicant that had a parking that had to go through the same process. It's been a few years already, and um, nothing's done. I mean, the fence, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying that whatever is good for one has to be good for the other one. Uh, the city has a piece of property right there where it's being neglected until the point where somebody has to make a comment, and then you see the city employees coming in and cleaning it up and fixing the fence because it fell off and... Yeah, I was the last one that made the complaint. I and know, that's and what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, say it was, but you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, it, it, yeah I, absolutely. And, not, well, I'm, and again, I want to put myself in that position where... So, you know, it has to be good. Whatever the city oblig it pushes people to do on their piece of property, yes. it has to be the same thing for the city. Uh, Again, the reason I'm saying this, I'm right in front of it, and I hear about it, and I see it every morning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they came in, they fixed the fence, but what goes on behind the fence is still really, really bad. And you know, no yeah. matter how much we can fix Ocean, Ocean, uh, Ocean Avenue, no matter how much landscaping we can do, no matter what, if between the city's property and the corner of Ocean Avenue, something has to be done. I mean, that piece of property, not as bad as the city property, but the corner of Ocean Avenue. Well. And, and I know some of you have the businesses real close to that area and the pier, Breakers Park. And I would, from my observations, going out there every year for the last several years and visiting at 7 in the morning, and now I can get a cup of uh, coffee pretty close <laughs> by and observe. And it is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, it's not only interesting, the, the, uh, the transient population, the homeless that are now over there has exceeded anything I've seen. Now, some other people have been around here a long time, but it's very aggressive panhandling that's going on. And, uh, and you would think there should be something that we can do about that. There's not a lot our police officers can do, and they, they can... Uh, talk to people, particularly when they're throwing the garbage out on the ground, as I've seen, and you know, from from the uh, waste containers, um, there there is a uh, requirement in the parks. You can't be in there overnight. Uh, so there there's some things that we can do, but uh, you know, the you got to be very careful on trying to address some of the things that are going on right now. I I, I brought it up to. Uh Captain Newcomb. Yes. There's more police presence because they drink right. coffee too, so they go to Starbucks, and there's a lot more. But you know, we still got to address the fence problem. We still got to address, you know, the way it looks, and, and particularly the corner of Ocean Avenue and A1A, where all oh, they come and put a bandaid on the fence, and then the next day the fence is off again. Plus, it's a deep. You know which one I'm talking about. Yes, and I I have uh, also recently taken some action to try to have that corrected. So it's in process right now to, yeah. to have the property owners fix that up. And, and you know, I, 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 when the owners come to town, they're from South America, when they come to town, I right. tell them about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't live here, they don't see what's going on. So it's the same thing as the corner of when Ocean Avenue turns. You know, the old uh, Sea View Hotel, it's the same thing over there. So, but the main thing that, I'm, that I was concerned about is, you know, that, that corridor, because a lot of people walk towards the boardwalk, towards the pier, and, 
you know, that's the main, that's a good corridor for people to walk. And there's a lot of walking traffic. So, you know, I ask you, please, you know, we need to see what we can do about it. Uh, if the city is looking for somebody to take care of it, listen, I'll put my name on it to take care of it. I don't have a problem because it affects my, you know, affects, I'm, I'm right across from it. But if something needs to be done about it. Uh, I agree. We're looking at all the it's aesthetic. Not, it's not that I don't want to be, look, I, I don't want to look only for myself, but that's the city property. And if people walk around just above the fence, the fourth foot fence, you can see what's going on over there. You know, it's, it's, it's not as clean as, and it reflects on the city too, on the parking. Reed, what I don't understand about the city is, um, back years ago, we went before the county council and we actually had a lighting ordinance that passed uh, that gave Daytona Beach a special exception in the core area and the rule is 100 feet uh, uh, from Butler Avenue uh, to 100 uh, feet south of the midpoint of the Main Street uh, street. You know, um, you're allowed to be, uh, they call it the community redevelopment area and you're allowed to have uh, an exception to the normal lighting rules that affect Volusia County. If you walk down Breakers Park at night, the lighting there, I haven't heard a little bit about this, okay? Uh, the rule on the, that we're allowed uh, is whatever the uh, Illumination Engineering Society of North America's lighting standards for public safety is allowed, which we're talking about. Um, Candlelight wise, probably over 20 candlelights. If you walk down the Breakers Park, I would bet that you're you're not even at two candlelights. Why? Why? Uh, and we're allowed to have reflective. Uh, we're allowed to have lighting that reflects onto the beach. So everything that you've done at Breakers Park is contrary to what is allowed to happen over there. And and I don't understand why. Uh, a lot of the elements that you're talking about, you add lighting, a lot of the bum elements are going to go away. You I know? And, and not only that, Dino, you know, and I, I'm going to elaborate on what you said. When the city acquired that piece of property, and I was present, I, I know exactly what the city says. Within 18 months, the landscaping is going to be done, the fence is going to be down, and there is the palm trees and this. They push, they, they, they put a lot of people in the corner to do certain things on their property, private properties. And, and the whole point about the city acquiring that was to beautification. It was, it was a beautification project. Uh, it was in 18 months. Everybody, we all said, all the neighbors said, 18 months, we can deal with it. Uh, I think 18 months multiplied by seven now, I think. Well, let, let's do this. Uh, let me give you a, a full update of where that that park is, and I'm going to get with some people about that. And the I could the, thank you. I'll do that as well. Uh, there is some work that's been done on lighting. Uh, they upgraded the the fountain uh, that's in the, uh, the the splash park. They've also uh, uh, been working on a contract again for that those lots to work on the the parking and the landscaping. So. I'll go back and find out if we've got any kind of commitment and timeline that's starting to move forward, okay? Uh, listen, I have the people from Starbucks, I have the Gary next door to me, we yeah. all agree that, you know, we need to, the Ocean Avenue ain't going to go nowhere right now, it's going to stay there. It's not going to go nowhere, there's too right. many private property owners, so it's going to stay there. Now, the, I'm going to make another comment, a little piece of property next to the city property, I don't think the city is going to be able to get it, but that's, that's my opinion. But it's the lighting. If you, you know, do, do you know after six o'clock, nobody, absolutely, that parking lot, nobody parks in there. You cannot see as far as your finger. You can put your finger. It's really, really dark. Uh, you know, it doesn't benefit me. I got my lights. I had more lights. It just blows the whole street up. But it still <coughs> looks like a big, big elephant, white elephant, sitting down there, not, not doing anything. You know, it's a shame because. It, it can bring people to the area, not only to me, not only to Starbucks, not only to Ocean Deck, but to the boardwalk, to that whole area. You know, and what people do is, that as soon as they get to uh, Harvey, they leave, they, they stop in Harvey, and then they start back again after they sign up Joe Crabshack, because that whole area, that whole piece of, of, of piece of property, that is dark to the max. I mean, it is really, really dark. And mining is the key. Yeah. Um. I, I, 
And again, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be the, you know, the bad guy or anything like that. But you know, city promised to everybody on Ocean Avenue said 18 months. In my, in my, we were all sitting at the at the commission, and everybody says, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to put them on the spot. But city managers said it was going to be in 18 months before they're going to put palm trees, landscaping, and beautification for that piece of property. That was the whole point of taking it, getting it, and staying as a parking lot the rest of the time. But it's still gravel, it's still you know, weeds growing all over. So, And like I said, no matter what we can do for our properties, you know, it still doesn't look good as far as the... Uh, and we're not only us. It's not only us. 7-Eleven just changed hands. Uh, just changed hands. And they come and they say, uh, what's going on over there? Wh who owns that? I mean, you know, no matter how much, that's why my main concern is that piece of property that uh, uh, next to 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. once that goes up, then the whole thing is all full. Everything's going to be full. There's nothing's going to be vacant. The only thing's going to be vacant is the city property. So, okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Carrie, yeah. any comments? Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Is that? You know, I think the reason um, that there's such a problem with these uh, homeless people in the commercial areas is because uh, my personal experience in, in living uh, in that neighborhood, uh, those homeless people are living in the backyards, on the porches, in the garages of all the houses that are in the entire CRA district. And I think if the, we have a volunteer police um, um, department of people that volunteer, uh, I think that if police, volunteer police people, I know the staff is probably too very limited to do this you know, with the regular police. Uh, but um, if they would put people walking on the streets like Grandview, Wild Olive, Oleander, and Hollywood, if they would just have one or two people like they go in pairs and walking up and down the streets, uh, they would see these homeless people. Um, oftentimes drinking alcohol on the sidewalks and this sort of thing. And they would actually see them and they could actually call the police and the police would come then and, you know, um, move them on. Uh, I've been working with Captain Newcomb now for over a year and I think I have one homeless person. Uh, I think we now have three owners of three homes on Oleander uh, who Captain Newcomb went to and said, to get this homeless person to stop living in the houses, your house, you have to sign a no trespass against this person. Yes. And these three owners, who are absentee owners, see a lot of the houses in these neighborhoods behind your businesses, they're absentee owners. And all these homeless people that you see up on A1A and on Main Street and all these corners, they live in the neighborhoods. And they live in garages they can get into. They live in tents in the backyard. I've had two tents there over the last year or two uh, in three different houses. Um, they live next to uh, uh, or on the property of a friend of theirs who's got managed to put some rent together and, and rent something behind these houses. So there's a friend there. So that they'll, they'll sleep in the vans. They'll sleep around the corners. Um, I've had people sleeping in the corner behind my house. Uh, I had dozens of people living in the address next to me. Uh, but um, Captain Newcomb has a very effective way. To, it's all legal. And if they go to the owners of the property the, and the property owner agrees, they will trespass them. And it does move them off that house. Now, there's one particular person and his friend that I, I mean, I have, I have got them off of three houses. Now, now they're back again. Now, just a few months ago, they're back in the fourth house again, living in the backyard. So I'll have to go to Doctor uh, to, to uh, Captain Newton to talk to him. But here's my point: if people, volunteer police people, were walking just those four, four, four or five streets, you're talking about six blocks this way, four blocks this way, on the north and south part of Main Street. If you just had a pair of volunteer policemen walking or women walking together. You know, um, on the street during designated hours, they're going to see these homeless people, and then they have a direct line to Captain Newcomb or to the police station there, and they can come and and talk to these people, because these people do not want the police coming up to them. You know, but that's where they are. They're all living in those neighborhoods. You don't think that they you don't think that they walk on foot 
from across the bridge to come down to 81A to hang out. They live here. And that's the problem. So with, with police, walking police or police volunteers or neighborhood volunteers walking the streets, seeing the people when they're out on the sidewalk, if, if they've got alcohol or whatever, or seeing them living, like I know, for instance, when people are living in, in yards around me, I know that and I can tell people. So I think that's a big part, could be a big part of the solution of controlling this homelessness on the beach side. Just to, to let you know, I think it was, I would say about, uh, I'm sure John and Mr. Heber can correct me, uh, we used to have police officers were walking. They used to be from the Hilton to where Ocean Avenue starts, Halifax, used to be that like the square that you said. But I think the police department ran out of money. But we used to have four officers, two during the day and two at night. And all they did is walk and talk to the business people and that's all they did. Unfortunately, I think budgets were cut and a lot of stuff was done and uh, he's shaking his head, he's saying yes, so I, I, I'm not going to get into it, but I know we had, uh, we went to the city commission, we asked for the same thing, we said we need officers to walk in, they assigned four officers. Or just bicycles even. Yeah, you know, no, you, you're right, and that program was in effect, it was working great. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think for uh, Officer O'Leary, that was there for seven years. Oh, God. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. There you go. It was Officer O'Leary and a couple other officers, I, and believe me, Every business was going, everything okay? Everything sure? See you, bye. And they did that on a seven day basis. We were told, and they came and said goodbye to everybody else and said, sorry, we ran out of money. <laughs> That's what we were told. He was great. I, yeah. I, no, there was nobody, I mean, he was doing the job legally, but we were, it was clean. There was no homeless from the hardcore area, from the boardwalk to where, uh, to, uh, I would say, to where Ocean Avenue starts just after Speedway, and they were walking, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. And as soon as they, we were told they ran out of money, they went back again. To the and city. you see, if they would take that, continue to walk on A1A and Main Street, and then they would continue that and take the walks four blocks back to Peninsula, both north and south of Main Street, three or four blocks, yeah. okay? Um, I'm of the opinion that this is the CRA district, and the CRA district does get I, money I, and funds, I agree with and funds for things. And I think spend right money now, on it, the purposes. And this would, I think the money should be allocated from CRA. I, I, and I know, Rick, you don't want to hear that. I think policing is one of the reasons. And I think, I think right now they have two problem. officers on bicycle. Yeah. One daytime, one nighttime. They're young, two young officers, uh, but it's, it, I see them from One Ocean Avenue going all the way down this way, I mean, one officer per uh, per shift <clears throat> on that thing, but I don't think one officer can cover that whole. Well, and I money. understand it, and, and I understand that the police department can't allocate ninety percent of their staff on the beach side just to the the CRA. The, the, let's say it's, let's say it's ten blocks. Let's say it's uh, <laughs> ten blocks this way and five blocks this way. It's not it's not even ten blocks, but anyway, it's two, it's two streets south. That also needs to be patrolled. It's heavy homeless over there. Okay, so let's say it's not fair, or it's not even, it's not even practical or reasonable money-wise to expect the police department to put all their all their money into the into the CRA area. But the CRA area is where the homeless people are. I understand, but I think, I think it's the whole budget. I, I, again, I, I might be wrong, and you can correct me. And they took off those officers from those area that you're talking about. Because of cut in the budget of yes, but that's the total city budget. For the no, I'm talking no, about the CRA no, 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 budget. No, no, you're right. But it was only for that area budget was cut off. I, Am I right, John? I think what they did was they cut the city's budget and then they used the CRA police to supplement what they lost from the city's budget. Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. That yeah. Remember, Richie did that report. Right. Yes. That we were, the, the CRA was uh, getting one million bucks exactly. for these officers. And they were using them in Midtown. So uh, because the reporting was not kosher, it was they were dropped. It, this is a problem. I mean, no, like, excuse me, but the <laughs> we've, we've gone through this. We should have directed we, it to you, right? I, well, please. Sorry. I mean, I'm just going to tell you that the, the CRA at one time, when, when it had a significant amount of money, started to 
uh, pay for both code and police officers to get a more concentrated effort of, in terms of the number of police officers that were on the ground. And when I first got here, I think we started uh, uh, ramping up some of the things that we we're doing over on the boardwalk because, as was said, uh, that, that those patrols had stopped and they weren't, you know, taking place frequently. <clears throat> so, so that happened for a while, but again, we've, we've had a, a significant drop, over 50% in the, in the revenues. And most of the revenues go towards debt service. So when you look at what was left in the pie, it was very little that, that, that you even have to work with once you pay your debt service. So that means that something's got to get cut out, and it was the police. And we've been all through this, and the previous boards know about it. And I'm sure Mr. Nicholson was here when, when some of those discussions occurred. Uh, we did have a state audit. They made some comments about about the uh, community policing, and there were, were some issues with record keeping, and we corrected that. And uh, um, so, so there were records being kept, but again, the, it was the money that closed the program down completely. And uh, depending on how things move along, maybe we'll have to revisit that. But I think. Uh, I think there's grants and other things that are still happening, and there's different ways for uh, for Chief Chetwood to make some decisions on how he wants to approach this. But I will <clears throat> bring up this discussion that we're having tonight to him, and you know, once again, and I'm sure Captain Newcomb keeps him advised of all of this. But I, okay. def I definitely agree with him. We got to protect the hardcore, you know, the, 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 the hardcore of Daytona Beach. We, we all got to you know care ourselves, but you know, it's being used and abused. And like, you know, like she said, it's the, you know, the homeless, you know, they don't come, uh, granted they come from the outside of the bridge when the season is here because there's so many people so they can come in bed, but she's right, they, they live around, you know, they are around. They are. And no matter how much we trespass them, no matter how much we, we tell them they're not allowed, listen, as soon as they go, they say, well, we're on city property, what are you going to do? So The trespass works. Yes, it, oh, trust me, I know it does. It works. But what they do is they go on city property works. and say, okay, what are you going to do now? We're on city property. Yeah, we, we use they trespass. After they're trespassed. Right, and we use trespass on our on, on some of our properties as well. That, But the the public land and public streets, very difficult. I understand that. Okay. Well, you know what we could do, um, and, and I would be happy to talk about to the people that I know in my neighborhood area, and what we need to do is we need to send some kind of notice uh, out to the homeowners that live in those neighborhoods, in those five streets I'm talking about. Uh, the city um, or this board or somebody needs to send a notice to all of these owners, absentee owners, to all the owners, and explain to them that, you know, there are homeless people living on their property and disturbing, you know, the whole neighborhood. And uh, they just need to be open to uh, the request whether they will pass a trespass against people, homeless people, to keep them off of their particular piece of property. Now that's all legal. There's no discrimination there against the homeless people or anything in that. You're just advising, like when I first started doing this, I didn't know the process. I didn't know that when a person's on private property and they, they don't belong there, that the police can trespass them. And then they can arrest them the next time they show up there. And Captain Newton explained to me that's the only way legally that the police can remove these people from these private properties. So I don't think anybody in my neighborhood knows that. So I think if we could get an information thing going where we would tell all, all the people that live in, my, in those neighborhoods, I think they would start looking and being more aware and call the police. I think they don't they don't call the police because they don't know that that function is available to them. I think a lot of I think a lot of us on the beach side we agree that uh, until things start moving a little bit more around here, and like Mr. Berger said, that the program might come back. Uh, you know, no matter what we say to the, to the commission, no matter what we say to the city, it's all about the money. It's all about the money. They're short of the money. They're short on the officers. And I believe me, I know I, I know that for a fact. 
but like he says, you know, until some of these projects come up and there's more money coming into town. Yes, but I, I have a feeling that we could afford, I have a feeling that the city could afford <laughs> to send a notification out to every homeowner in those 10 blocks <clears throat> by 5 blocks. Yeah, I, I think... Don't so find them at the problem. I'll, I'll speak to uh, Captain Newcomb about that, and, uh, and we'll see if we can do something along those lines. Because okay. if those people know that you know that that's that there's a legal way to move those, they, they think that you, they can't get rid of them, even if they're on private property. Yeah, we'll I see. If, notify the people. Sure, we'll see what we can do with that and uh, and move that along. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Good you. idea. Teresa. Nothing. Theo. Nothing. All right. I don't have anything either. So the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.